Um, thank you, uh, Ciarán Cola. Again, I only have the four minutes, so I'll have to um, evade the niceties. But um, I do want to say, it's starting off, that I know that the frontline workers and uh, public officials have done an awful lot of work, and I wish them well in their work over the next period of time, because they're going to face um, possibly um, quite a difficult uh, situation in the hospitals and elsewhere. And I just want to refer, first of all, um, to the letter from Patricia King, um, on behalf of the President of Victor, that uh, sent a, a letter to the Taoiseach yesterday. And the letter refers to the problems that could be faced by hundreds, and thousands, hundreds of thousands of low-paid, non-unionised workers who do not have a contract for sick pay with their employers. In a severe crisis of COVID-19, these workers may be asked to self-isolate or even face temporary layoffs without pay. Under the Safety, Health and Welfare Act of 2005, employers have a duty to protect staff and under the same act, employees have a duty of care to, fo to fellow workers. Workers in this situation will have to rely on sick pay or unemployment benefit if laid off. And these benefits are very low in Ireland where we have pay-related social insurance. We do not have pay-related benefits as is the norm in most EU states. The flat rate of sick pay is €203 Euro a week. However, it doesn't cover you for the first six days. Um, as has been said, it's been extended from three to six days in 2012. Um, I note that the Tory government have moved to reduce the waiting time from four days to none. Workers classified as self-employed, um, often bogus, may not even be entitled to state benefits. So what is the government going to do about it? I heard the um, uh, Taoiseach saying today that they will be coming out next Monday. When are you going to meet the Congress of Trade Unions? When are you going to, um, uh, how are you going to bring in legislation if necessary to change those, uh, th th those and what mechanism? Um, uh, the last point I want to make is just really in relation to high risk. I was over with Cystic Fibrosis Ireland this morning. Um, I do have a, a family member who has it, um, and there's huge concern. And I'm thinking about the CF, COPD, uh, people with cancer, uh, diabetic. Um, I was talking to one of the women this morning over there, and she said that um, in the first 71,000 cases in China, the death rate of people with diabetes was 8.4% of the people who died, and that's the figure she gave me today. So I think we have to be planning and put that liaison officer that they're looking for, that see when they got back in 2002 in the swine flu, where the first patient who died was a CEF sufferer, and they put the liaison officer in, officer in to work with those groups. So I think that has to be done.